Hello and welcome. Today I'll be going over the Castle of Friendship, which I featured earlier this week on my YouTube channel. I finally completed this castle and I would like to do a walkthrough commentary tour of the castle like I normally do in my previous castles. So yeah, let's get started. Um, so in the front here, uh, this is probably one of my favorite areas of the castle, just this little courtyard area. Um, I decided to go with the simple um, coffins just because I didn't think that, you know, every castle does not have to have a stone coffin or something very elaborate looking. And sometimes just having something simple is all you need. Um, since I decided to go with the grass ground, I thought it would fit better here. Uh, originally, I had some kind of stony looking uh, flooring, like I used the uh, rough floor at first, but later on I decided to just swap over to grass because I knew I wanted to have horses here just chilling. Um, there's lots of cherry blossom trees all over this castle. Uh, it's just very, very cool. Now, I made this castle uh, for my best friend. She's super chill, super cool. But she and I are two complete opposites when it comes to taste. So I would never build a castle like this for myself. Um, not to say that it's, you know, bad or anything. It's just not my taste. Um, so I, I definitely had a fun challenge with this one. Just trying out new things, trying to make sure that I uh, fit within some of the core parts of her personality and see if I could make something that she would love. She actually uh, did see the castle. She absolutely loved it. Um, but yeah, let's start over here. So uh, in this area, I decided to put some morning flowers just so that the servants who will eventually live here can just come here and mourn their deaths because they have now lost all freedom of their existence uh, after being captured by a vampire. In the center here, I've put white cherry blossom trees rather than the pink ones. The reason being that the rest of this area is very, very pink. So I thought that having white cherry blossoms here might actually kind of tone down the colors and I didn't want it to be overwhelming with the pinks. Maybe it's just me not, you know, with that not being my favorite color and all. Uh, but yeah, and, and the cypress trees over here, I think I did a, a great job just lining them up, uh, kind of separating the garden artificially with this little uh, hedge here as a break. And uh, something that a lot of people were commenting on was how uh, the tree surrounding the teleport pad was a, was a good um, design choice and, you know, maybe a smart use of the space. I also agree. Um, the only thing with this is that it's not a very colorful space. I could have put benches here. I could have had a little bit more uh, going on. But I ultimately decided to just let it be a functional piece of the castle without compromising it. And as you can see, um, the trees are easily covering this area. Now you're probably wondering why didn't I just use cherry blossoms just like I did throughout the rest of the castle? Well, the oak trees have the highest or sorry, the uh, oak trees have the widest crowns. So they have the best coverage when it comes to uh, hiding you from the sun. So I decided to go with oak trees just to be sure that this functional part of the castle is not being uh, a hazard to anyone. So like, you know, my friend, she's still really new to the game. So if she were to AFK right here, I don't want her burning to death in her own castle. It would feel really bad about that, to be honest. Uh, so I try not to make a poor design choice there. Um, I'd say that like a lot of times our uh, our personalities are like really show in differences just because like her favorite colors are pink and black whereas mine are like uh black and red so it's kind of um i guess the best way to describe us would be that like she's bubbles and i'm buttercup if we were talking about like powerpuff girls for example like as a just as a personality example um these cypress trees here also fulfill a nice purpose by creating a little bit of shade but not so much that it's overwhelming uh, I decided to put a lot of uh, vines and flowers throughout this whole thing. She she has a very like bubbly personality in some ways, and she really likes to have um, you know uh, things that are pink and things that are just very just it's just a very like feminine castle. She she loves that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, someone might even say it's girly, but I mean 
hey, uh, <laughs> this is kind of like her preference, so it doesn't hurt to uh, at least uh, try that out. Now, one thing that really drives me absolutely insane about this castle is how there's this one rock that just keeps forming and coming back. It's like a cancer that won't go away, and I fucking hate it. <laughs> it grows back differently every time. Like, sometimes it'll grow back as quartz, sometimes it'll grow back as iron, sometimes it'll grow back as copper or sulfur, and sometimes it'll just be a regular uh, rock like this. So it's just, there's nothing I can really do about this. I can, like, it's outside of the territory uh, lines. So if I uh, go into the... Uh, tab here you can see the blue line is the end of the territory so I have no way of preventing that I hope that when uh, the 1.0 build comes out I'm really hoping that the uh, problems like this will just go away because I know even at my Gloomrock castle I have trees that grow right in front of the doors and it's so fucking annoying <laughs> I hate it so much uh, but yeah, let's go uh, upstairs. Well, actually, oh, before I go upstairs, I want to go over this room here. So this room here is supposed to be kind of like a dining room. At first, it was going to be kind of more like a ballroom. Uh, but I ultimately decided to go with the dining room. Uh, I decided to put flowers underneath the tables because originally my, my plan was is I thought, oh, well, if, it, if the flowers will glitch upwards with the vases, maybe I can do the same thing with tables. And it did not work the way I intended. So unfortunately, all we have are these like super sparkly looking uh, tables, which kind of grew on me and I decided to keep it anyway, just because the orange kind of fits well with this room's color palette, especially with the antler chandeliers. So it just kind of adds a little bit of like um, magic to the room, I guess you could say. It looks really cool. So I decided to keep it anyway. Uh, all right, so let's check out the upstairs here. And this upstairs area is two staircases put together. So I used a corner staircase and a flat stair, uh, sorry, two corner staircases with a patch here. Um, you can't connect staircases together without some kind of foundation in this game, unfortunately. So I couldn't just like create like a, like a weird, like rounded uh, staircase thing here or anything like that. Um, the game doesn't currently have a mechanism for that. So that kind of sucks. Um, this room here is completely empty and it's just for sh like the outside of it is just for show um, because I wanted this side of the castle uh, at least these two windows here to have or not windows uh, two panels here to be um, uh, in line with each other and I didn't want them to be like mismatched if that makes sense when it comes to uh, their depth so yeah, uh, I decided to go with fire blossoms on this staircase, though on the other two I went with sunflowers. I thought the fire blossoms made more sense here because it adds a glow to this corner when this side of the castle right here doesn't actually ever get hit with sun. So it, it just didn't make sense to, um, to put sunflowers here without any kind of sunlight. And of course, you know, the sun's coming out so you would be able to see that anyway. Uh, here on this third floor I put a nice little uh, kind of a chill out area you have some uh, nice little benches here I thought would be really nice I had a hard time choosing between black benches and pink benches but I ultimately went with the pink because I said you know what um, the ground is not super dark like I used like a classic castle flooring here for the upstairs because there's so much going on that it didn't make sense for me to do some elaborate flooring underneath uh, you could barely see the, the flooring as it is, um, so yeah. Uh, this this statue here, this gargoyle statue, I had a hard time deciding between using the onyx colored one and the marble colored one. Ultimately, I went with the onyx because the two fountains, you can't really change the colors of them, and I wanted a black and white balance. Um, so yeah, I, I, I wanted a little bit of a visual balance here so that it's not overwhelming, and it, it actually turned out pretty well. In this corner here, I decided to put like a little um, elevator, which uh, she loved the elevator when she saw it. So I, I'm glad I, I decided ultimately to keep it in there. Um, over here on this side, you can see the fencing all the way around. You can also see some enemies out in the distance, which is pretty cool. 
but the fencing on the balcony was something that I have been uh, it's a technique that I've been using for a while and basically the way you get this is you put down um, invisible foundation or what is it called yeah invisible foundation and then you build your fence around the invisible foundation and once you have your fence uh, throughout the entire perimeter of the area you want you put down the regular castle flooring and eventually you get this really cool effect where you have fencing on the outside of the balcony now this does not stop you from jumping down you could still jump down from here but it's a nice visual touch so i i think there's really nothing to lose by doing this um so you also have uh this little dungeon area in the dungeon area i decided to use torches rather than the dark silver um lamps that hang from the ceiling or sorry that hang from the side so instead i just put torches up here and i already captured one uh prisoner for her to start with uh, i don't know if they'll be turned into a servant or what but once this castle gets up and go uh up and going and you have a bunch of servants walking around i think it's going to look great uh now that's a project for another day of course but uh, i wouldn't be opposed to going out in the world and finding them myself but i don't know we'll see she might want to do that uh, process herself but we'll, we'll have to see in the future now this corner here is very dangerous right now down here if you notice i actually took away one of the um cherry blossom trees and i also have the firelight uh sorry the fire blossoms and the snow flowers on different halves now you can still see the um snow flowers like all the way in the back here but the snow flowers don't exactly pop the way that the orange uh, flowers do with the fire blossoms especially around the cherry blossom trees so i wanted to have that be as like a kind of a counterbalance for the other side of this hallway uh, that way you have a little bit of cooling and heating in one sense and the other so like this forward part is like front presenting um, because the entrance the main entrance of the castle is here so i want to this hallway to have a, a cooler feel to it without being overwhelming uh but yeah so i've been strategically placing these mist braziers throughout the castle and i'll show you why so if i go upstairs right and i go here now walking around this area i'm not in danger of burning essentially because even though I'm going through multiple levels, the mist brazier on the first floor still protects me from the sun. So this is something that not a lot of people realize, but uh, yeah, you don't have to have the mist brazier on the same floor as you in order to uh, reap its benefits. So having this little uh, little bit of smoke coming up here is kind of a nice little touch, a little detail. And then of course you can go up here or you can go throughout here. I'm going to start going this way since we already went through the dungeon area. Now, we have a little hallway here. The reason why I put a gate here is to ensure that um, the sun doesn't just burn you from here, or at least it shouldn't, right? And over on this side, I have a nice little, uh, I guess you could say a little hidden balcony area where you can still hear the water from the upstairs. So you still have that calming, relaxing feel to it. And down here, we have some stone benches. I decided to go with the stone benches because on this floor, I stay true to the stone siding. Uh, I used the, hold on, let me see what kind of flooring I used here. I just wanna make sure you guys can know which one. It was the large cobblestone blocks. And then on top of that, I used the garden cobblestone paving as the center of the uh, tiles. So it created a nice little uh, pathway going from point A to point B, and I only use this on the second floor of the castle. So throughout the whole second floor, you'll see this uh, cobblestone uh, intertwining, and I think it just it just adds like a nice little pop. Uh, these flowers here that are up high, like for example the um, the roses, the blood roses. If you notice, they're really, really high up on this pot. Uh, sorry, on this planter. Now, the planter I used here was the. Um, let's see. It was the noble tall planter. 
And if you notice underneath the planters, there's like a little bit of a hint of what I did here, where you could see the small plot. Uh, hold on, let me turn my character a little bit. You can see the small plot here uh, planted underneath. And if you plant a seed underneath there, when it grows, it will bloom on top of the structure if there's no available space. It just glitches upward to the height of whatever the object has. And I think that uh, being able to replicate this throughout the entire castle, wherever I had these planters, was really, really nice touch. And it also added a level of consistency. Uh, this elevator brings you up to the third floor. I've already shown you this, so I'm going to go this way instead. Here I have a wine case I named Enemy Tears, because why not? And I also have a really cool little planted area here. I didn't really know what to do with this space originally, but I decided to just add some, you know, flowers and just kind of add a little bit of variety. So uh, with the morning flowers, I wanted the blue to contrast against the red and just add a little visual interest. Uh, well, sorry, something interesting, uh, visually interesting, I mean, to that area uh, to create something really, really cool. Uh, throughout this whole uh, hallway here, as you can see, you can see all the way down here, you can you can see the staircase, there's a lot going on on the left hand side, but if you go to the right hand, sorry, if you go to the, I meant right hand, oh my god, if I go to the left hand side and I walk in here, you notice a bunch of garden furniture just chilling, so maybe someday when we can sit in the game, we can uh, sit down and chill privately while also having uh, a close eye on whatever servants are walking around underneath on, uh, throughout the castle. The reason why I blocked out this area to servants and I put the servant locks is because this should be a private area for, you know, guests to come over, sit down, chill, and maybe grab a glass of wine from this uh, before they sit down and relax. Now, I also like that I'm able to jump down from here. I did the same thing here as I did on the third floor. With the balcony and i added the railing the railing here uh is again a really nice touch it's a really cool trick to be able to do that um and then also uh we have a little painting here to fill up this hallway space if you notice i still have the cobblestone uh, pathing going on here uh, i decided to put two t-shaped pieces here uh, just to lead into this area because it's easy it's easy to walk past without really paying attention so I just wanted it to be more obvious that this area existed. Now, if I walk up, I did the same glitching technique here with the flowers. Unfortunately, um, because of how low these pots are, they didn't actually like the flowers didn't actually glitch upward, but they did grow in place and they look really nice. I decided to go with some uh, trippy shrooms here on this side and the opposite side just to add a little bit of variety to the room. Now I use the um, the different type of vine here. I didn't use the, the um, vine I've been using throughout the rest of the castle, which is the roses uh, wall. Um, hold on, actually, let me see what, what it's called so I don't misquote myself here. So for the castle wall vegetation, I used the, um, it's the morass. I don't know if it's called morass or or if I'm mispronouncing it, I don't know my plants very well, unfortunately. So I do apologize if that is the case. And throughout the rest of the castle, I use the blood rose um, uh, wall growth. So this time I used kind of like a more mystical uh, one, you could say, where it kind of has a more fantastical look in the sense that there's a bunch of like, you can see some dog ear mushrooms uh, sticking out of here. I'm pretty sure they're called dog ears. And then you have some other little ones down here. And then adding some trippy shrooms to the mix. As you can see, you have the little planter underneath here. Um, it, it just kind of adds like an extra little feel. And of course, on these planters here, these bases, I did the same thing I did out in the hallway on the second floor um where the blood roses are glitched up from the planters so that's definitely really cool now something i did a little bit different and something i had hoped that worked but it looks like it doesn't work is i tried to plant some blood roses underneath the garden furniture to see if i could glitch it upward it looks like this trick only really works on vases and planters and doesn't really seem to work or translate well on other types of furniture for some reason so unfortunately, 
The roses did not grow on top of the table, but because the tables do have holes in them, it looks plausible that roses could have been growing from underneath and poked through and uh, did okay up here. Now, uh, this only works because the roses grow upward for other plants like fire blossoms or grow shrooms or anything like that that's closer to the ground you wouldn't have a very good effect in fact you'd have the same problem i had over in the dining room area where the tops of the the tables were just kind of glowing um, but they don't really have anything poking out indicating what it is that is underneath them so yeah i think these this is a nice little touch, really cute little uh, detail, I think, for these tables. And uh, yeah, nothing else. I kind of mirrored the same thing on this side, so it's exactly the same. Originally, I put some ghost shrooms here, but the blue contrasted way too much with the rest of the rooms. So I ultimately swapped them out for trippy shrooms. So yeah, that I think that was a nice little touch. And uh, going on, moving on here. I have uh, a little fence gate here. Now you're probably wondering, why do I have a little gate here? Well, because of the way that I glitched the um, the furniture, or not the furniture, I made the, uh, the railing here. I actually had to redo this railing several times because I wanted to have the entire railing have this fencing. But after a couple of mistakes here and there, I ultimately decided not to go out of my way to fix this because it was just, it would just take too much time for uh, everything to come back. And I, I was not willing to wait around for that. Um, I think the flowers take about two hours in game to grow, but like trees like these would be like, I think four uh, hours. So it was kind of a mess. Um, now I can't remove this because of the way that this works, I cannot change this to a regular flat gate like the way that it, you know, this gate is here. I can't make a flat gate here. Uh, if I remove this, then I can't replace it with anything. So I decided to just leave the gate here. Um, originally, the gate was here because I have to keep running back here to do some corrections on the railing, but I just couldn't get it to work uh, after I... Um, after I dismantled part of it and tried to rebuild it, it just it just couldn't get it back to where it was. I had too much infrastructure around it already built and it just wasn't working. So I decided to leave it alone. That's probably my least favorite part of this castle is just these two uh, areas here because they don't have the lining that I want. Now, I didn't do that on the inside part of the castle. Uh, mostly because it's leading into the castle and not out of the castle. So I decided to just have the railing on the outsides of most of the castle parts instead. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. I, I think I, I did a pretty okay job with this. Now I'm going to go upstairs. Uh, so this area here is probably one of the my favorite parts of the castle as well, other than the fir uh, first entrance that you go to. The reason why is because of the way that when you walk through, it just looks so like open and grand uh, leading up to the castle throne. Now, the rest of the castle didn't really feel like a like like a like a grand castle, I guess you could say. But to me, it was more like a uh, just a really visually interesting space. So to have uh, something visually leading up to this uh, le uh, leading up to this was really cool i ultimately decided to move the throne forward one like half space and then i was able to use the teleport pad on here so that if i want to command the servants right away i could just uh use that teleport pad and it would be easy to get over to the third floor um, now you're probably wondering what is this right here these are actually a garden item i got them from the uh, so if we go to the paths section underneath garden, there is the gravel garden paving. Now the gravel garden paving, uh, paving is usually used vertically to, in a space in order to kind of create, you know, a path to whatever area you're going to. Um, usually this is typically used on services like, like uh, grass or uh, rough pavement and stuff like that. But I decided to use it sideways horizontally here and uh, just kind of created almost like a runway uh, leading up to the um, the castle throne, which I think was a really nice touch. If we go here around the corner, I mirrored the same thing on the other side, but uh, yeah, you can jump down from here to make it to the second floor. 
and you can go all the way around here and of course I have another mist brazier here that will be uh, doing its thing in the meantime and that way when you go through the stairs you're never going to burn during the day because the mist brazier is there to create a uh, shade or cover for you now these sunflowers was actually a uh, kind of an experiment i didn't know whether or not i could plant these flowers here and actually let them thrive but it actually did work the way i thought it would and surprisingly it actually doesn't look too bad i think i could have um maybe um Maybe I could have used a different planter, but I decided to go with the more organic looking planter just to see uh, how it looked. And honestly, it kind of grew on me, so I kept it. Uh, on the other side here, you see the same thing mirrored, like I said. Now, this is probably the only part of the castle where I actually used the planters as like the garden planters as intended. Uh, these are the same planters I used when I glitched the blood roses up into the sky. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then of course I have the railing here that I've made by using the invisible foundation yet again. Down here I kind of mirrored the same thing I did before. You can go down and around the corner and you can, uh, you know, basically go back to the first floor from here. But that's not all I'm going to show you. We still have one more destination I'd like to go over and uh, talk about. So to the right here, we have a little area, which is a very, very cozy room. I like to call it the chill out room of the castle where my friend could sit here. Well, if she could sit, you know, put her feet up, chill, relax and, you know, enjoy the fireplace. These windows do close. I have the window hatches that close and from the outside, uh, it looks really nice, even whether it's open or closed. So, uh, you know, that's something that I try to keep in mind is does this window look good when open? Does this window look good when closed or does it look odd? Uh, I think I did a great job here trying to hit that balance while also not creating uh, too much of a contrast between the fireplace and the rest of the room. So uh, the reason why I went with this white fireplace is because I thought it just looked uh, a little bit more expensive. The gold, uh, I guess you could say, I don't know if embellishments is the word I want to use here, but the gold accents on it um, really complements the rest of the gold accents on these curtains and stuff like that. And I only ever really used these expensive looking curtains in this room because this is supposed to be, you know, kind of her private chambers just to relax. Uh, without it being an actual bedroom. Now on uh, this side here, I have probably also one of my favorite parts of the castle where I placed some chairs here. Uh, as you can see, I have four chairs around each table and it's, it's a cute little uh, balcony area where you could sit and chat with friends. Uh, that, that was kind of like the idea behind it. Here I also used the morass on the outside for the wall, uh, the castle wall vegetation. I only used it here. I did not use it anywhere else in the castle other than on this building here and uh, those two pillars downstairs on the second floor in that other um, uh, kind of like outdoor balcony area-ish on the second floor. Now up here, I decided to use some snow flowers. Originally I had uh, some morning lilies up here, but I felt like the glow from the morning lilies didn't really pop as well at night as I thought they would. So I ended up swapping it out for the um, snow flowers just to create a nice visual contrast. That's not, that's not too harsh, but it's just appealing enough to the eye that it, it looks like it fits in. And uh, of course you have the three cherry blossoms here, which cre create plenty of shade for people just just enough shade so that when you're sitting here uh, you're not getting affected by the light and I'm sure vampires would definitely appreciate that design so yeah um, I think that's pretty much the end of this uh, tour uh, notice also I put the uh, balcony railing here as well with the fencing uh, with the garden fencing I hope that in the future this does not get removed it but instead becomes like a normal thing you can just add because um, having to put invisible foundation before making the balcony is kind of a pain in the ass, especially if you're just start like you're just in the planning phase of your castle. So you kind of have to think really far ahead in order to get this uh, going before you even 
uh, do that. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the castle tour. Uh, I know a lot of you saw the other castle uh, tour video where I just kind of do like a silent walkthrough. Uh, if you haven't seen that already, I do encourage you to t uh, go and check that out. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you so much for joining me on this wonderful adventure. I very much appreciate you. And as always, Sholo out.